Mental health is a big issue because it is the intangibles that we aren't able to understand in not being able to be in other people's shoes. I see it akin to like chronic pain. It just wears you down. Having that experience of excruciating pain day in, day out, 24-7, it's tiring. We're here to help people get healthy and to sustain it. I have a client who I will never, ever forget. And what he had told me is that he goes into the hospital for mental health issues because of attempted suicide or thoughts of suicide. He would frequently say, I have to earn my oxygen today. I'm worthless, I'm no good, and I don't provide anything to the greater community. Now he is actually providing presentations on mental health to his doctor's offices. He's a speaker at national conferences. The work that I've put in with this client and the amount of effort that that client puts in is absolutely amazing. And I will carry that in my heart till the end of my career and beyond. I've worked with a lot of kids who unfortunately have been sexually abused or physically abused. It's really important to be an extra positive adult in their lives. At Richfield Middle School, we have 950 students and we have two school counselors and one social worker. And we aren't therapists. Most of our therapists' caseloads are completely full and there's a long list of students who need these services. When students come to school, they're at a critical point for us to be able to interact with them because it's a space that is stable, it is secure, it is routine. One student tends to get upset in class and he walks out of the room and it can come across as, as very defiant. When he feels overwhelmed, frustrated, scared, he'll shut down and he'll want to leave. In his work with Alex, we found out that is a skill that he's learned in coping strategy with some issues at home, with some family violence. With Alex, they'll talk about that past trauma and what can you do about it now? What's in your control? She was able to come up with specific interventions so he feels heard, he feels like we are responding um, to his needs, and the teachers can help him practice the skills that he's learning with Alex. I think that healing happens in relationship because I was a brown kid in school that needed therapy that didn't have access to it. And to be able to share, um, be it culture or identity or anything like that, or just come to a meeting point with kids at this age is really critical. So I have a personal investment there, knowing what it can look like when kids don't have that and how meaningful it is when they do have that connection. If the family partnership did not exist, families, individuals with multiple needs would not be able to get the services that they need to talk about the times that they were assaulted, the times when they felt like they weren't worth anything. They wouldn't have the opportunity to heal and recover from that. Most of the kids that I see would have no access to therapy. So many children here are experiencing chronic not getting their needs met. So walking into a clinic, that's not safe for a lot of people. We are often the only people that our students feel like they can talk to. Without that mental health support, we would see a lot of self-harming behaviors, suicide, child protection issues, turning to drugs or gangs. There's coping strategies out there that kids find, but they're usually not healthy there would be a huge unserved population. We serve the people who are in need who don't have access through other means. Everyone deserves to be happy to live their best lives. If I were to say that there was one thing that, was, that is truly important, it is our ability to provide that hope.